imagine if we could get back behind our four portraits of Jesus known as the canonical gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because of course, the truth of the matter is this, that behind the four portraits of Jesus was one life, one series of events, one series of sayings, one dramatic ending of death and resurrection and appearance to the disciples. What I've tried to do in the Gospel of Jesus is create for the reader the original story behind the four stories. It's a, an amalgam or blending together of both synoptic and Johannine stories. And what I have done to fill in the gaps is use a little historical imagination to figure out how the pieces fit together. It's not just a blending together of familiar synoptic and uh, Johannine accounts, though it includes that, but it's also a way of arranging the material and filling in certain gaps using historical reconstruction. So this is not a fictional story about Jesus. It's a historical recreation based on the four Gospels we've got, plus the use of historical data, archaeological data, other kinds of data that helps us fill in the story, the gaps in the story, since, of course, all four canonical Gospels are episodic. What makes it different? Well, what makes it different is, of course, that you have a combined story, not four separate stories. You have a story that tries to get behind the four portraits we have in the Synoptics and in John and tells you what was the one linear story of the life of Jesus. It's a single chronological telling from beginning to end, giving you a clear sense, I think, of the social setting, the historical setting, and the theological and religious impact of Jesus' life. I wanted a translation that was crystal clear at any level of discourse. And the translation that we have there in the Gospel of Jesus is one of the most straightforward and simple translations that you can find, which um, is clear enough even to an eighth grader, but also works with adults. Well, the audience for the book is people who are interested in Jesus, whether they're believers or unbelievers, those who are puzzled about how you put the pieces together. I like to say we leave, live in a Jesus-haunted culture that's biblically illiterate. So there are lots of people that know about Jesus who have really actually never read the Bible. And hopefully they would read this and then go to the Bible. I was doing a tour a year ago and I had my uh, pilgrims who were going with me to Turkey and to Israel to read this. And one of them came up to me who was certainly not a Christian, who was in fact there with his live-in girlfriend, and he said to me, you know, I've never really understood Jesus very well, but this put flesh on his bones. This made him seem like a human and yet more than human figure that I could actually relate to and understand. What I would want to say about if you read all the way through this is if you're already a Christian, I hope that it will crystallize in your mind how much more there is that we would like to know about Jesus. And simply looking at the stories that we have from a different angle of incidence will give us more clarity. But of course, most of all, the real reason I wrote the Gospel of Jesus was so that you might see him more clearly, love him more dearly, and follow him more nearly, or for the first time.